Bueno, muy, buenas, muy buenos días a todos y a todas. Yo también, como directora de este curso, mi nombre es Cristina Prado. Quisiera también, eh, ante todo, unirme a la bienvenida que ya se ha realizado en la apertura de este, de este curso. También agradeceros eh, vuestra presencia y, bueno, y otra vez desearos que las expectativas que ha creado este curso pues, bueno, se vean cumplidas en todos nosotros. Eh, bueno, pues en la primera parte de este curso, que será durante esta mañana, pues lo vamos a dedicar fundamentalmente a profundizar en lo que es el informe de la Comisión Stiglitz. Vamos a conocer los distintos aspectos de este informe, las recomendaciones que realiza, así como también eh, se va a exponer ya quizá en la segunda parte eh, de, la intervención, de esta primera intervención, pues de las iniciativas que a raíz de este informe pues se han adoptado desde la Comisión Europea y concretamente desde el Eurostat. Y para ello, pues bueno, contamos con una de las personas que en este momento es responsable de llevar todas este, estas iniciativas eh, a cabo en Eurostat. Eh, y como es, pues, eh, Inna Steinbuka, eh, que en primer lugar lo que quiero es agradecerle pues, su, su máxima disponibilidad a, a, a venir aquí eh, hoy, a pesar, bueno, ella tiene algunos problemas en la voz en estos últimos días, entonces, pues, eh, con más intensidad agradecerle el esfuerzo eh, que va a realizar hoy. También agradecer, pues, bueno, a, a, un, eh, a Pedro Díaz de, de Eurostat, que es eh, la persona que nos ha facilitado la presencia hoy aquí de INA. Y bueno, y brevemente eh, comentar un poco que INA está en Buca, es licenciada en Económicas por la Universidad de Letonia. Actualmente es directora de Estadísticas Sociales y de la Sociedad de Información de Eurostat. Y desde 2005 al 2009 también fue directora de Estadísticas Económicas y Regionales de Eurostat. Ha ejercido como profesora de macroeconomía en la Universidad de Letonia también hasta el 2005 y durante el periodo del 2001 al 2005 fue presidenta de la Comisión de Servicios Públicos de la República de Letonia. También en un periodo anterior y hasta el 2001 fue asesora del director ejecutivo del Fondo Monetario Internacional. Del 1991 al 99 eh, pues desarrolló su eh, carrera profesional dentro del Ministerio de Finanzas de la República de Letonia en diversas responsabilidades, como primeramente como responsable de la unidad de investigación, posteriormente como directora del Departamento de Análisis Económico y, y Política Fiscal, asesora del, del Ministro de Finanzas, eh, por otra parte, bueno, pues ha realizado numerosas publicaciones, ha intervenido en gran número de proyectos internacionales y ha obtenido pues, diferentes distinciones y premios que, por dar un ejemplo, podemos mencionar la del 2008, que le fue concedida la Orden de las Tres Estrellas por sus logros en las áreas de Economía y Finanzas. Y bueno, también en el 2005 obtuvo una medalla por el Ministerio de Defensa de su país por la participación en la negociación, en la negociación de la incorporación a la NATO. En definitiva, que tenemos eh, la suerte de contar con una gran profesional, que sin más le voy a dar la palabra a Inés Tembuca para la primera de sus intervenciones, eh, eh, de la cual la trataremos eh, de, de desarrollar aproximadamente en una hora, porque hemos... Eh, Hemos acumulado un pequeño retraso y bueno, vamos a dar paso a la primera intervención, límites del PIB como indicador de crecimiento económico y progreso social. Good morning to everybody. First, I apologize that I cannot make my presentation in Spanish language as I, I don't speak Spanish. Uh, and we will all, I will count on interpreter and I'm, uh, you know, I already checked the quality of her English. Uh, I'm sure that she will do uh, her best. Um, Indeed, I have problem with my voice, as Christina said, but I hope that I will not lose it completely during my presentations. Uh, third, uh, I'm really grateful for uh, organizers for inviting me to the beautiful uh, part of Spain. Uh, I've been only once in San Sebastián and this is my second visit. I really benefit uh, over weekend for going around. It's beautiful. 
Um, and I definitely will give your uh, regards to uh, uh, my fellow director, Pedro Diaz, uh, who convinced me to come to San Sebastian to the summer course. Um, now, I was listening with interest my uh, CV, <laughs> but I think only a couple of things are relevant to this course. I mean, uh, I really worked for a number of years in the Ministry of Finance. That's why it's uh, even symbolic to make this speech following your minister. Uh, and uh, as a director of um, uh, economic analysis and fiscal policy, I was using GDP I mean on a daily basis. And I think I know uh, GDP from inside. Uh, moreover, I used to work in the IMF and at that time there were another crisis. Not like this, but still it was a crisis in Turkey. Uh, when it, it was the end 19th, beginning of 2000, uh, and uh, there was another crisis in Russia. I just remembered this, uh, how we use GDP for different fiscal uh, measurements. And, uh, okay, now uh, already um, since 2005, I'm working in statistics. I think I have accumulated uh, enough knowledge to look at GDP from different perspectives, including statistical one. Uh, so, um, uh, I uh, sent you in advance a lot of uh, references to many, many different things. But in my presentation right now, I will basically use two documents. Um, First, it is a communication on GDP and beyond. This is a European Commission communication, which was issued about at the same time when the Stiglitz Commission started to work on its recommendations. And the second document is recommendation of Stiglitz and Fiduci Commission. I'm sorry for a small typo uh, in uh, name Fiduci. It's uh, instead of date, should be T. I'm sorry for this. Uh, in my presentation, I will look at the uh, GDP pros and cons. Uh, as I said, I will try to inform you about this uh, EU communication uh, on GDP and beyond, measuring progress in a changing world. So I will briefly inform you what it is about. And then I will switch to the Stiglitz Commission recommendation. Uh, and uh, in the end of my presentation, I will try to make sort of links between Stiglitz Commission recommendation and different statistical domains. Um, GDP pros and cons. Minister already said that uh, the concept of GDP has been established in the uh, 13th of the last century and uh, GDP has become a standard benchmark for fiscal, budgetary and monetary policy. Moreover, I'm convinced that this is the best indicator exactly for these needs. I mean, I cannot imagine how fiscal policy can be made without fiscal accounts and how monetary policy, how inflation, how central, central bank uh, actions can be uh, justified uh, without uh, reliable GDP figures. I'm talking not about this aggregate indicator GDP, I'm actually talking about all underlying information very rich information coming from the national accounts. So this is very good indicator, but I mean, we, we should not uh, overstate, the, uh, uh, overstate the meaning of GDP for every political purpose. This indicator indeed is fit for purpose. This indicator very well fit for, as I said, fiscal budgetary and monetary policy. Um, how we count GDP to make it very easy, 
Uh, and I'm sure the audience know, but just to refresh your mind, GDP is uh, um, the uh, sum of uh, private consumption, public consumption. I'm sorry, this is a second mistake. I hope there is no, no, no more. Uh, so, private consumption, public consumption, investment, and uh, plus export minus imports. Of course, we can count GDP differently from the production side, and, uh, and this is actually quite a, a big machinery to properly count GDP uh, because it's a sort of accounting on the macroeconomic level which in the end provide us with this figure. Um, I must say that the framework and rules for calculation GDP are set in the European system of accounts which is broadly consistent with the UN system of national accounts. And Minister also mentioned uh, exactly this very well-established methodology. Sometimes it seems to me that indeed, as compared with social or environmental statistics, which are, well, reasonably developed, but it's totally incomparable with the rich history of uh, uh, producing and improving national accounts, which indeed are very, very good statistical instrument for providing reliable statistics. Uh, now, just to make it short, why GDP is not uh, the universe uh, indicator, I decided to refer to uh, Robert uh, Kennedy uh, address at the University of Kansas in 1968. You can re uh, uh, recall that Minister said that the first criticism about GDP uh, appeared in the uh, 17th. Actually, it started much earlier. I must say that uh, Simon Kuznets in 41 uh, criticized uh, GDP and uh, uh, underlined uh, limitations. And even before, in uh, 34, uh, a United States National Bureau of Economic Research also made uh, sort of critical remarks of GDP. However, back to 17th and back to what uh, Robert Kennedy said in his address. Too much and too long we seem to have surrendered community excellence and community values in the mere accumulation of material things. Our GNP, okay, GNP, uh, G, um, uh, <laughs> a gross na national product. So it's you can replace national by domestic, and uh, the message will be similar. Okay, our um, um, uh, gross national product, if we should judge America by that, counts air pollution and cigarette uh, advertising and ambul ambulances to clear our highways of carnage. It counts special looks for our doors. So it's about uh, safety or security. Yet, uh, the GNP does not allow for the health of our children and the quality of their education or the joy of their play. It measures everything, in short, except that which makes life worthwhile. And it tells us everything about America, except why we are proud that we are Americans. So you can basically replace, as I said, the GNP by GDP and America by Europe and 17th by nowadays. And the message will be very similar. It will be very similar because now the limitations of GDP are exactly the same as it was noticed many years ago. Uh, it counts uh, different uh, air pollution and uh, water pollution and uh, resources which are spending or wasting for some goals, for instance, for security measures which could be achieved in a different manner and everything counts for the value added and for 
uh, material, material welfare still. Uh, now, uh, Minister also mentioned various initiatives uh, which were launched uh, in order to supplement GDP with uh, some uh, complementary indicators. And one of the recent uh, European Commission initiative uh, was about GDP and beyond. So beyond meaning that GDP has its limitation and we should look beyond GDP in order to have clear picture uh, on, our, on the progress of our society. Okay, what this communication is about? This communication identifies actually five actions uh, to be taken in the short and medium term on better measuring progress. So when it's to, uh, about measuring, this is actually about statistics, because who can provide the measure for or metrics for making a policy based on evidence? Only statisticians. So it's about measuring uh, something more than GDP. Um, and the aim of this uh, communication is to develop more inclusive indicators that produce a more reliable knowledge base for better policy making. Now, I mentioned that this communication uh, has five actions and I will briefly inform you what are these actions about. The first action is about complementing GDP with environmental and social indicators. Um, as to environmental indicators, uh, in the communication it is mentioned the necessity to have a comprehensive environmental index. I can give you a couple of examples of already existing uh, composite environmental indices. This is uh, carbon uh, 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 footprint and also ecological footprint. Both of these indicators are developed by NGOs and actually relatively broadly used. Um, recently we tried in the uh, Eurostat to assess to what extent Eurostat can label these indicators as official statistics. Unfortunately, we came to the conclusion that it is not possible because the quality of these indicators is questionable. The uh, comparison across the country is also not easy to do. And moreover, this is very complicated. I'm now talking about ecological footprint. It's extremely complicated indicators which combine different elements and weights for each has been selected on a subjective and not very well justified background. So the conclusion is that well, we don't uh, mind if uh, these indicators will be used, but we warn that the quality of these indicators is not very good. Uh, however, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, we just uh, give in. So we are trying to work with DG Environment on development of this um, comprehensive indi composite indicator and according to communication, uh, this, in, in, at this pilot study and some uh, uh, calculations should uh, be available rather soon, either this or next year. Uh, actually, my colleague Pedro Diaz exactly is involved in um, uh, cooperation with DG Environment and he is working also on this uh, area. And however, in Eurostat we are convinced that the big and uh, the large emphasis or more emphasis should be given to the development to the environmental accounts. But I will come to this later. Now, uh, uh, the Commission also stated that it is 
important to further improve uh, the measuring of quality of life and well-being. And in this context, uh, in the communication, it's mentioned the necessity of combine of combination of uh, drivers or output of the quality of life, like uh, availability of education and health and uh, uh, employment and so on, but also output of uh, um, of the feeling uh, of the people's feeling to be satisfied or not satisfied with these drivers. I mean, we can have access to education or the access to the health, but maybe quality of education services or quality of health services is not sufficient. I mean, it's driver or input, but what is the level of satisfaction or, or well-being? This is output. It's not always clear. That's why uh, statistics should provide uh, measurement for both drivers of the quality of life and also output or the feeling of the people about their well-being. Uh, so, and now about second action. Second action is about uh, developing near time, near real time information. What does it mean? We know that uh, GDP is available on the quarterly basis. Yeah, it's relatively timely. I mean, uh, we can uh, all, always wish to have uh, uh, the information available yesterday, but, but I mean, it's okay. We have many of indicators like price indices, uh, which are available every monthly on the month basis. What about environment and social statistics? It is not the case. I mean, uh, talking about environmental statistics, uh, there are many instruments in place like internet and so on to uh, look at the different pollutions and so on and to have uh, near real-time information. But whether statisticians already can to use all these uh, things in, uh, in, the, uh, in the real life. Uh, it's not the case yet, but of course it will come later. As to social statistics, I must say that the situation is also not rosy, because, for instance, uh, I'm sure you know SILK, which is one of the flagship projects of uh, European social statistics. Huh? Unfortunately, the latest information from SILK refers to 2008, and 2008 it was actually, well, the economic crisis already started in 2008, but the consequences of the crisis for social statistics were not visible yet, and we are still dealing with 2008 statistics in 2010. So, I mean, um, this is uh, indeed um, a signal that a social statistician should think about maybe flash estimates in social statistics like uh, they exist with HICP, uh, this harmonized uh, in the price index, uh, or with the GDP. GDP also we publish in Eurostat flash estimates uh, before the final uh, information is available. So maybe in social statistics we should do similar exercise. And it, as a matter of fact, Spain Statistical Office already uh, made a quite impressive exercise which would allow to... They actually justified that the time between collecting information and publishing information can be reduced essentially. And uh, now we, uh, at least this is my um, goal, to uh, spread to this uh, very good practice among European member states and try to convince them that even for, maybe not for the wholesale, but maybe for some non-monetary perhaps indices, we can try to make these flash estimates and to uh, uh, provide politicians with uh, actual information for their decision making. 
Uh, now, uh, the third uh, action is about uh, more accurate reporting <coughs> on distribution and inequalities. Uh, I will not comment this action now because I will comment it later. Uh, now, uh, the fourth action is developing uh, a European Sustainable Development Scoreboard. Okay, this is um, something which uh, the action, and uh, this action actually has its uh, background in the past. Uh, you may uh, recall that in the European Commission there is a strategy for sustainable development. Now this strategy together with uh, Lisbon strategy will be basically replaced by EU 2020 and in my second presentation I will tell you more about this. But in sustainable development strategy in order to evaluate the progress, uh, Eurostat uh, in cooperation with uh, many uh, directorate generals of the commission uh, developed uh, the Sustainable Development Indicators uh, set. It is a set of Sustainable Development Indicators which can be found in Eurostat web page. So, uh, the conclusion of the Commission was that this set of indicators is not sufficient and should be also supplemented because uh, uh, there are many new developments, especially uh, with regarding to pollution and uh, and so on, and efficiency of spending resources or non-efficiency of their spending. So, Commission um, suggested to replace the Sustainable Development Indicator set by this uh, scoreboard. The scoreboard will also include threshold for some indicators and. Uh, the quantitative inform information about indicators will be supplemented also by qualitative messages or analysis, which will be uh, also found in this scoreboard. Okay, the last, uh, uh, the fifth uh, action is extending national account to environmental and social issues. So, and uh, we very much agree in Eurostat with this action number five because uh, for, for example the new regulation on national accounts or on environmental accounts uh, already is in the European Council and we hope it will be approved soon and uh, pass the European Parliament and uh, maybe in the end of this year it will be in place which will allow of course to make further progress uh, with regard to the coverage and quality and uh, harmonization of environmental accounts. Now I will switch to the recommendations of Stiglitz Commission and you will see that uh, some of these uh, recommendations overlaps with what I already mentioned under uh, GDP and beyond communication. Uh, therefore, in my presentation, my lesson, I will try to make integrated conclusions on two initiatives. However, sometimes, you know, it, uh, it really worth to distinguish a couple of uh, initiatives which are better uh, uh, formulated or better uh, underlined in one of them. For instance, I can tell you that in GDP and beyond communication, the environmental component and environmental aspect is definitely better underlined. I mean, GDP and beyond is, if, uh, if uh, so to say, is a little bit asymmetric towards environment. When uh, Stiglitz recommendations has and another sort of asymmetry towards social issues. So, for me as a director for social uh, statistics, Stiglitz's recommendation sounds even better. Um, but uh, I'm, I would also want to, uh, I would also like to stress again this timeliness, uh, which has been stressed exactly in GDP and beyond communication. It was 
It is less clear from Stiglitz Commission report. Now, actually, Stiglitz Commission report is a quite uh, big uh, document, and uh, those of you who uh, read it, it's fine. Those of you who not, uh, maybe it's worth to read at least a summary, which uh, is very well written, which uh, contains main messages and main recommendations and uh, avoid a lot of technicalities. And actually, in my uh, presentation, I will basically use this summary, because for me, it's really very straightforward. Um, the first message uh, is that, uh, uh, well, actually, it's message about messages. Uh, uh, it, it, Sorry, this message is about uh, the following, towards better measures of economic performance in a complex economy. <coughs> Before going beyond GDP, it's worth analyzing where existing measures of economic performance need improving. Now I actually come a little bit back to the pros and cons of GDP. Huh? So I already stated that there are some limitations. But now we can look a little bit deeper where these limitations are about. And um, the first thing, which is extremely important, is that uh, um, uh, in GDP there is extremely big amount and share of services. Because in nowadays world, the share of services in GDP is roughly between 70 and 80%. And measuring of services is uh, quite tricky because sometimes we measure the same input. For instance, with a medicine, we can uh, measure what in, uh, the expenditure side of medicine. Uh, it's government spending for the hospitals, for a number of doctors, nurses, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's difficult to measure quality of treatment of the patients, okay? So how to, if this is really tricky, the same uh, is, can be said about many other services, financial services and so on. So the measurement of these services is a very uh, different things and could provide, uh, it, it, it of course provides rich information from the spending side, but interpretation from the um, uh, quality of the services is uh, not uh, very straightforward. Now, uh, there is also quality problems with some high-tech industries like telecommunications, like ICT, when the products are changing uh, very quickly and uh, they cost more, but they provide all, all, I mean, with higher prices, but also higher quality. And it's not always possible to catch with the current system of uh, national accounts. Um, so this is uh, one problem with the existing GDP, which perhaps was not uh, very visible in 13th or even 17th when the criticism came up. So the criticism at that time was different. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, okay, second limitation is about uh, the following. GDP is one general <laughs> indicator of uh, economic progress. Economic progress um, uh, it gives us a general picture. Uh, in per on per capita basis, it gives us a very average picture, and your minister also gave a very good uh, example of the family which is uh, not within the average GDP per capita. So, um, GDP cannot provide any information about inequalities. Uh, so, it gives us the average picture but it does not provide us with a real picture of how society uh, works and uh, how many uh, poor households there are or how many rich households and what is the distribution. Uh, 
the next is uh, environmental limitation, which uh, you can remember my reference to uh, Kennedy. Uh, I mean, uh, GDP includes, for instance, use of gasoline uh, for high traffic jam, and uh, this high traffic, many cars on the streets, um, the usage of gasoline, of course, contribute to the GDP. Uh, it shows growth of, G of the GDP, but it also provides a lot of harm for society, especially for the next generations. Um, so basically, these are um, limitations about GDP. And uh, I mean, in Stiglitz, uh, in his report, they, they even said that policy masters are like pilots trying to steering a course without a reliable compass. So I, you know, maybe they exaggerate a bit. So, huh? No, no, it's still the same. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, uh, perhaps it's uh, um, a slight exaggeration because uh, I'm sure that politicians have enough information, but. Uh, you know, the information should be presented in a very clear, uh, well-structured way. And there are so many different indicators, they perhaps are a little bit confused, and in the end they say, okay, GDP is growing, everything is rosy and fine. Uh, but as a matter of fact, if uh, the limitation of GDP would be uh, very well uh, articulated in the society before economic crisis, perhaps it would have helped to avoid the euphoria about high growth, <coughs> high GDP growth in 2002-2007. Yeah, it was high growth, everybody was so happy about this, but in fact there was nothing about sustainability of growth. And this is another limitation which is extremely important. GDP informs us about current growth, but it doesn't say anything about its sustainability. And actually what happened is that the growth, in, uh, which was really uh, quite impressive in 2002-2007, partly was achieved on account of the future the generation because it was not sustainable, it was not sustainable. Uh, now, uh, the second message from Stiglitz's report is from production to well-being. Uh, he said that it is important to shift emphasis. In no way, he, in this report, somebody questioned GDP as a very good indicator. But, uh, the report really said that we shouldn't just rely on GDP. We should shift a little bit emphasis. We should go actually beyond. Um, what is important? When evaluating material well-being, uh, it was suggested to look at income and consumption rather than production. And even in national accounts, we can find a good indicator for this. For instance, net national income without uh, depreciation, yeah, so without costs. So this is an indicator which maybe it provide more information than uh, GDP. Now, household income and consumption. It's also available from national accounts, disposable household income and consumption. You know, sometimes consumption can grow much slower than uh, GDP. So, and this already can provide some worrying signal to politicians. Same with uh, disposable income. I mean, combination of these different indicators already available should provide better messages for politicians. Now, uh, the set, but, but of course, uh, there are still very aggregate indicators. Uh, there is nothing about inequality uh, of a society. Next, um, it was uh, suggested to emphasize the household perspective. Uh, the third is important to consider income and consumption jointly with wealth. I think this is very important because uh, 
For instance, uh, if um, you can find in the society low income uh, families, but uh, they already accumulated stock of their wealth. So if they are wealth, uh, I mean inherited it from previous generation, I don't know how, that as compared with medium income household, which has not accumulated any stock of health, of wealth. So this, uh, it's, it's not very clear which household is in a better position. So that's why, I mean, statisticians should provide information on the stock and flows. And as to stocks, wealth is extremely important. Um, now, next is give more prominence to the distribution of income consumption and wealth. So this is distributional aspects and inequality aspects. I will come to this later. Um, and uh, the last is broaden income measures to new market activities. You know, families sometimes provide themselves with self-service. Gardening, uh, cooking, I don't know. Uh, cleaning the house and so on. Uh, and uh, if, for instance, instead of cleaning the house themselves, they invite a cleaning lady uh, on official market, and it's, I mean, not illegal somebody, but official, who is paid and it's reflected in national accounts, that it gives illusion as if uh, GDP is growing, but in fact, this is the same activity. I mean, it was just uh, the activity which was uh, done by the family uh, themselves without any uh, monetary uh, aggregates involved. Just switch to somebody who is paid. Now it's in national accounts, but nothing has been changed in uh, terms of quantity of, uh, of these services. Okay, so this is uh, one more uh, <coughs> important thing. The next uh, is uh, next message is about well-being. That well-being is multidimensional. Um, according to Stiglitz, uh, in this slide I have listed uh, these different dimensions of well-being: material living standards, including income consumption and wealth, health, education, personal activities, including work political voice and governance, social connections and relationship, environmental, uh, present and future conditions. Uh, and, I mean, if people are not happy with uh, pollu air pollution or water pollution, they are not happy, you know, despite of maybe high salaries. And insecurity of uh, an economic as well as, well as a physical nature. So this is uh, dimensions of well-being according to Stiglitz. Now, uh, what about uh, <clears throat> the uh, recommendation number six and seven? Uh, they are uh, linked to the objective and subjective dimensions of well-being, which, according to Stiglitz, are both important. Uh, quality of life depends on people's objective uh, conditions and capabilities. Steps should be taken to improve measures of people's health, education, personal activities, and environmental condition. In particular, substantial effort should be devoted to developing and implementing robust, reliable measures of social connections, political voice, and insecurity that can be shown to predict life satisfaction. Uh, I must say that, uh, of course, it's extremely important to, to measure uh, different aspects of, uh, um, of quality of life and well-being. And actually, in my <coughs> second presentation, I will give you some insight about uh, Eurostat action. So I will come to this later, but with more information what actually is going on and what we are going to do. Now, seventh recommendation of Stiglitz is the quality of life indicators uh, in all the dimensions covered should assess inequalities in a comprehensive way. Um, 
I think that uh, what he means by comprehensive way and what does it mean in equalities. Uh, I'm sure that uh, it's about coverage of different subgroups of population. For instance, Im immigrants. I mean, when we are talking about inequalities, we can look at uh, gender uh, distribution, or we can look at age, or we can uh, look uh, at uh, uh, some some more as sex. Yeah, but 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 at the same time, immigration is something which should be perhaps also looked at more carefully because this is phenomena which is extremely important in all aspects of uh, immigration, including the quality of life. So, uh, uh, the eighth recommendation of Stiglitz uh, is the following. Surveys should be designed to assess the links between various quality of life domains for each person, and this information should be used when designing policies in various fields. And this is about uh, actually matching of different surveys. I mean, there are in, in social uh, domain, the surveys are in a way uh, produced differently and uh, they are quite separate from each other. It's difficult to uh, have a comprehensive and uh, comparable information across different surveys, uh, therefore matching of uh, variables and matching of statistical surveys, and this is crucial, and uh, uh, so this is what is meant. Uh, the next message uh, and recommendation is about objective and subjective dimensions of well-being, which are both important, so I just continue. Uh, the recommendation number nine is that statistical offices should provide the information needed to aggregate across quality of life dimensions, allowing the construction of different indices. Um, this is about producing composite indices not only in the environment, as I, when I mentioned ecological footprint, but also in social domain, it's possible to, uh, um, to make sort of composite indices. And your minister, if you recall, he mentioned human development, it's human development index, uh, produced by United Nations Development Program quite a long ago. And this index uh, is um, well known. Uh, and uh, broadly used by politicians and by researchers, but um, also this index ha has uh, limitations. So Stiglitz uh, and his uh, fellows of the commission, they suggest to uh, go ahead with these uh, different uh, composite indicators. Uh, but at the same time, um, in my, as a matter of fact, I referred in my uh, list of literature to one very good paper by Professor Atkinson. And Professor Atkinson actually uh, questioned the, um, uh, how to say, uh, uh, value of, of these composite indicators because according to him, and I must say I agree, Sometimes it's better to have many different uh, indicators and to look at each of them in order to try to replace them to something one in general. Because the general indicator can really provide a misleading message. It very much uh, depends on the selection of weights and um, it's always subjective. I mean, if uh, the composite indicator includes something from education, something about health, something about uh, uh, employment, and something about happiness, and I don't know what else, yeah, then what will be uh, the uh, results? And what is more important for us? Quality of education, quality of health, or quality of what? So, I mean, uh, but at the same time, if, if we use uh, the equal weight, I mean, no weight at all, just mechanical combination, it's also tricky because maybe something is more important than the other one. I mean, 
the composite indicators uh, have their pros and cons, and uh, I'm not totally again, but uh, somebody should be very careful when using this uh, composite indicator. Now, the ten recommendation number 10 is measures of both objective and subjective well-being provide key information about people's quality of life, and statistical offices should incorporate questions to capture people's life evaluation, hedonic experiences, and priorities in their own survey. So I will not make comments on this because I uh, have to speed up maybe a little bit. Uh, the next message is use a pragmatic approach to word measuring sustainability. I am very much agree with the word pragmatic, especially when we now suffering uh, a cut of resources, I think everybody, including statistical offices, and uh, being uh, ambitious, we should be also at the same time very pragmatic and to clear distinguish what can be done uh, in a quite speedy way and what should be left for the coming years. Now, the recommendation number 11 is the following. Sustainability assessment requires a well-identified dashboard of indicators. The distinctive feature of the components of this dashboard should be that uh, they are in interpretable as variations of some underlying stocks. A monetary index of sustainability has its place in such a dashboard, but under the current state of art, it should remain essentially focused on economic aspects of sustainability. Well, I must say that sustainability in general has very many aspects. It has economic aspects because if, uh, for instance, I already mentioned unhealthy, unsustainable growth before crisis, and it could be perhaps sometimes uh, uh, identified if one would have better look at uh, inflation, at uh, price rise in household sector, and many other indicators, um, uh, including maybe expansionary fiscal policy and so on. So, but this is econo from an economic perspective. Uh, sustainability in GDP and beyond, for instance, is meant more in the environmental aspect. And the same approach, you, I will come to this in later, is um, uh, used in a European Strategy 2020. So sustainability, which means environmental sustainability. But social sustainability also should be uh, kept uh, in mind, because if the growth uh, is achieved uh, and at the same time there is enormous uh, unemployment or I mean, uh, mm, households are lost their uh, wealth in a way. This is not sustainable. This is here. So all three aspects should uh, be kept in mind. But uh, maybe I should also draw your attention to this sustainability dashboard. You may recall that I mentioned already environmental uh, or sustainable indicators scoreboard for in the Commission Communication GDP and beyond. Basically, it's, it's the same. I mean, the dashboard which meant uh, by Stiglitz and uh, um, uh, sustainable uh, scoreboard meant by in GDP and beyond are definitely a lot uh, overlap. Uh, next, uh, 12th recommendation is about physical indicators for environmental pressure. You know, when I said that GDP and beyond is slightly more asymmetrical towards uh, environment, uh, I can tell you that in uh, Stiglitz's uh, recommendation of only recommendation number 12, is fully about environment and part of recommendation number 11. All the rest recommendations are really related to 
social statistics and to social uh, domain, uh, well-being and quality of life. Now, just this last recommendation. The environmental aspects of sustainability deserve a separate follow-up based on a well-chosen set of physical indicators. In particular, there is a need for a clear indicator of our proximity to a dangerous level of environmental damage, such as associated with climate change or the depletion of fishing stocks. So, okay, so this is about all recommendations. Now, uh, now I will make it really fast. Um, I will show you the links between the recommendations and the domains of statistics. The first three recommendations relate to national accounts. You may remember that I, uh, I also said that uh, as to recommendation number one, uh, some additional indicators like net national income or disposable household income or private consumption can be used to supplement GDP uh, for policy making. And these indicators are very well available. Uh, as the same about, for instance, emphasizing household perspective. I've mentioned silk survey. And Silk Survey, and actually also Labor Force Survey, provides excellent information for uh, evaluating household perspective. Another t uh, uh, question is that maybe there are not very, I mean, especially uh, Silk is not very timely, but uh, all information is there. And consider income and consumption jointly with wealth. It's also possible on the basis of already available information. In any case, this is clearly national accounts issues. Next recommendation, uh, number four, uh, is related to both national accounts and social statistics. Uh, because it says about give more prominence to the distribution on income, consumption, and wealth. Uh, in my next presentation, I will tell you more how Eurostat is trying to meet exactly this challenge. But just briefly, it's important to have linkages between some national account aggregates like for instance, consumption or disposable income with social surveys. If this link would be available, it will supplement national accounts, aggregate with distribution, distribution and the real picture of inequalities in society. Uh, so what uh, is the next is... Um, uh, national, uh, again, recommendation number five, broaden income measures to intra-household non-market activities. Um, this is also both linked to national account and social statistics and require compile comprehensive and periodic accounts of household activity as satellites uh, to the core national accounts. It also requires time use surveys as a major source for these data. As a matter of fact, it's quite difficult to convince member states about usefulness of time use survey and at the European level we provide this uh, with a very low frequency and uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's unfortunate but, uh, but for the uh, 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 member states, I mean, for bus country also, uh, it's possible to use time. It, 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 dep it depends on your own needs. And, uh, okay, and comparison of living standards over time and across countries needs also to take into account the amount of leisure that people enjoy. Well, when I, this of course important, but when I said about pragmatism, um, I mean, maybe now it's not the real time to measure leisure. Maybe after a couple of years, when the crisis will be uh, forgotten, then maybe we can switch to this. I mean, the report was written, at least the start was, 
in a different circumstances before crisis. So in time of crisis, I think we should be careful in order to in, indeed select the right priorities for the moment. Uh, now, uh, recommendation number six uh, to, is uh, about social indicators on quality of life and clearly uh, links to the social statistics. Steps should be taken to improve measures of people health, education, personal activities, and environmental condition. I mean how people feel about environment. Huh? And then a substantial effort should be developed to develop, uh, devoted to developing and implementing robust reliable measures of social connections, political voice and so on. So this is statistical, the uh, social domain of statistics. Recommendations number seven, eight and nine also totally related to social domain. Uh, then recommended recommendation number uh, 10, it's the same, social, and uh, recommendations number 11 and 12, actually, I mean 12 is totally environmental, and 11, as I said, it covers everything, national accounts, and uh, not only because there are also sort of crises, and so on, and environment, and so on. Um, now, just uh, before uh, end up this my presentation, uh, I can tell you that uh, I mean two things. And the first thing is that why actually we need uh, better statistics. Uh, I already said a lot of things about it, but I would like to add one more. Uh, to reduce people's perceptions, as a gap between people's perceptions about the life and the uh, figures what official statistics provides. And I can give you many, many examples of this. With GDP per capita, it was already said by Minister, we have many examples with the prices because people can feel inflation in a totally different manner, uh, uh, as uh, official statistics stated. But the same with the quality of life. And uh, I mean, it's extremely important to uh, improve uh, and to raise uh, the trust of uh, civil society in official statistics, which is actually relatively low, especially with uh, in regard to some uh, indicators, and I'm sure that the uh, uh, feelings of the society about uh, quality of life is different from what official statistics is saying. And that's why uh, going beyond GDP and implementing uh, Stiglitz report recommendation will definitely help to narrow this gap, gap between perceptions and uh, official measurement. And second thing, uh, I, I must say that um, statistical uh, quantitative uh, indicators and quantitative information does not grow on trees. It requires a lot of investment. I mean, we can indeed dream about go beyond and beyond and beyond GDP, but we should be very pragmatic and we should try to convince policymakers that money are necessary and funding is necessary if we would like to make further step and progress. So thank you for uh, your attention. I understand that we all need coffee. Mm. So and, uh, see you soon. tan ajustada al tiempo que habíamos convenido. Eh, sí que la verdad es que se ha pasado en este denso repaso por todas las recomendaciones de forma rápida, pero yo creo que a lo largo de la mañana en las distintas intervenciones vamos a tener la ocasión de volver sobre muchas de ellas. Ahora simplemente comentar que nos damos 10 minutos, no, no, no más, porque este retraso lo tenemos que ir de alguna manera eh, paliando. Entonces, a menos 5, aquí...